Hi folks, this is Calc 3, Quiz 23, the last checkpoint quiz of the semester. For a constant r bigger than 0, we're given a vector-valued function, which is going to trace out a surface. This is a parametric surface. In terms of u and v, we're given bounds on u and v. We're asked to show that r is a parametric description of the sphere, x squared plus y squared is r squared. All right, so on this surface, x is given by big R sine u sine or cosine v. Y is given by big R sine u sine v. And z is given by big R cosine u. To show it's on the sphere, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, what I need to do is take x squared plus y squared plus z squared and show that that works out to be r squared. So we've seen this a couple times already in class. We substitute for x, y, and z. And we're looking what's going to happen. We're getting an r squared sine squared u cosine squared v r squared sine squared u sine squared v. So these two terms will combine with Pythagorean magic on v to give us r squared sine squared u. And we just happen to have an r squared cosine squared u standing by. And so Pythagorean once, magic once again gives us that's equal to r squared. Now hopefully you recognize this as being spherical coordinates. where u is the angle phi and v is the angle theta. And if I look at the u, it's between 0 and pi. If I look at the uh, v, it's between 0 and 2 pi. And so I'm actually tracing out the circle, or the sphere rather, exactly once. All right, now we're asked to show why r is, uh, technically isn't smooth at these two points. So to check for smoothness, I take this normal vector. I need to know this is continuous and non-zero. So how do I find r u of u v? That's the partial derivative of r with respect to u. The calculus of vector valued function goes component wise. That means I need to take the derivative of each component with respect to u. So I'm going to have r cosine u cosine v r cosine u sine v and minus r sine u. And similarly here for r v, I take the derivative of each component with respect to v. So I'm going to have negative r sine u sine v r sine u cosine v And there's no v's here, so that derivative is 0. Now I take the cross product and see what I get. So I'm going to have r cosine u cosine v, negative r sine u sine v. I have r cosine u sine v r sine u cosine v and finally negative r sine u zero and now I need to do that cross product all right so let's see what we make of this huge cross product here I wipe out the row and column that the i is in I get zero minus a negative times this so this is going to be a positive r squared sine squared u cosine v. Wipe out the row and column that j is in. I get a 0 minus two negatives. So that would be a negative there. But remember, for j hat, we take the negative again. 
So I'm going to get an R squared, sine squared U, sine V. And last but not least, I wipe out the row and column the K hat is in. I get R squared, cosine U, sine U, cosine squared V, minus a negative R squared, cosine U, sine U, sine squared V. So I'm going to get an R squared, cosine U, sine U, cosine squared V, plus an R squared, cosine U, sine U, sine squared V. And we'll get Pythagorean magic to get R squared sine u, cosine u. Now if I take the magnitude of this vector to see where it's zero, I'm going to get the square root of this squared plus this squared. Well, that's going to give me r to the fourth sine to the fourth cosine squared v plus r to the fourth sine to the fourth sine squared v. Pythagorean, Pythagorean magic gives me r to the fourth sine to the fourth u plus here I get an r to the fourth uh, sine squared u cosine squared u. So I can factor out an r to the fourth sine squared from each of these. That will come out of the square root as an r squared absolute value sine of u. And what's going to be left inside when I factor that out? None other than sine squared u plus cosine squared u, which Pythagoreans itself away to 1. I look at where u lives, and u lives between 0 and pi. And on that interval, the sine of u is always bigger than or equal to 0. And so this simplifies then to just r squared sine u. Where is this going to be 0? This is going to be 0 when u is either 0 or pi. So when u is 0 or pi at the endpoints, that's when this thing's going to 0 out. What points correspond to u equals 0? I plug u equals 0 back into the original vector value function. I get 0, 0, positive r. When u is pi, I get 0, 0, negative r. So technically, this, is, uh, this vector value function isn't smooth at those points. So that could potentially screw up flux, because when we go to compute flux, we're looking for at the outward normal vector. But as long as we can get the outward normal vectors to converge to what they should be, we should be all right. And that's the subject of part C.